I had this drum sound that I would use on every record, uh, and I thought I was the, uh -huh. I was the, 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 the dog's bollocks. Was that like, related I, to this one? Yeah, sort of. It was, yeah, I, I sort of, that was me okay. in the yeah. 80s. I yeah. was that drum you're, sound. You were the man. I you was were, the man. You were the guy. And, the and, yeah, and um, so I thought this is what I do. And of course I realised after this album that you don't, if you think that you have any preconception on how a record should be, you're sort of sunk. Lee Mavis for me, pound for pound, is the best acoustic guitar. If he was in here, if you could line up everyone I've ever worked with, give him an acoustic guitar and have a sing off. It'd be good to go that way. Yeah. yeah. He would he would win. He'd beat Bono, he'd beat Dave Matthews, he'd beat anyone I've ever worked with. When you think you do a record, all it's it's, it's a bit like a horse race, I always think. When you finish a record, they're all the songs are level. They're all lining up together. And then history go things happen and, and time goes by and certain songs go ahead of other songs but really when you finish it you don't know that um that that anything is you know because it's like your children you know do you love any of your children more than any of the others you don't you just you, you do you try your best on everything so you I, I didn't really you know this was just another song on the album um you know i i remember doing the war album with you too and someone saying that new year's day that's a big hit and i went yeah, but what about so and so? Right. You know, I didn't know. You know, I don't really. At the time, you so got your head in trying to make everything good right. that sometimes you 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 know. Because I'm not. There's some producers now who really just sit back and don't you know, and they have this big overview of records. I tend to like micromanage everything. We we looked at your discography and there was just so much material. I mean, yeah. we're not even talking about U2, we're not even talking about the Rolling Stones. Yeah. What is it like being in the studio with bands like that that you've with done that, albums with? Well, with, I mean, with U2, I've known them for 30 years. I've worked on eight albums with them. But how do you turn around and to Mono and say, I want it this way? Oh, I'm one of the few people who can because, I mean, on the first album, I'd had a couple of hits and they were the new band. And, and, and I actually remember on the first album sitting at the desk and the band were behind me and, and, and hearing a, someone laughing, so I turned around and they all went <laughs> like that, you know, and, um, and, and it's funny that my relationship with you two now is that whenever they see me, it's like, oh, Steve's here, we better get down to work. I'm very proud that I did produce possibly the worst Rolling Stones album <laughs> until the worst Rolling Stones album. <laughs> so that, was one, style, right. that was a style, that was a style the downward slide. Yeah, right? it was really, I mean, um, you know, a real man would never say no. To, to, to producing the Rolling Stones, no. and I, I like to feel I'm a real man. Well, you went in there, and, and the fact is, I learned much more from them than they learned from me. Now you say, what did you learn from them? And it's, you know, I was brought in by Mick, because Keith, the, Mick's, you know, was always like, well, who's the current, you know, he's always checking. Who's out there? Who's, who's out there? Whereas it? Keith is like just the old blues guy yeah. who doesn't give a toss yeah. about anything. Let's just get it right. Let's get it right. And, and um, yeah. So I was brought in by Mick. I, I, I very soon realised that the, the, the cool camp was hanging out with Keith and <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> yes. Um, which I ended up doing rather a lot. And, um, uh, shall we not go there? <laughs> no, 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 but it, no, but it was good. And I, I did learn, but, but it's difficult to explain in words. I mean, Keith's cool thing, you know, I mean, he, he really was, you know, it, that not much was discussed, you know, the, the whole analysing of anything was was very uncool and 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 it was and really the band weren't really functioning that well but I did get the odd glimpse of how a great band could be the, the reason I'm here yeah, by the way there's this thing called CMJ right it is and um, my, my very good friends at Avatar recording studios um, are holding this this good question and answer thing tomorrow um, for any band who wants to go. I think you go to the Avatar Studios website and you can right. sign up for it. And um, and I'm going there and listening to anyone's questions. And and if you bring your tape along, I think I'm going to listen to people's demos and oh good and, and, and <laughs> before he leaves now and critique them. Uh, so if any, uh -oh. <laughs> anyone out there uh, wants to come to Avatar, just I think you go to their website and and you sign up and you come to Avatar oh. Studios.